Yes, uh, because I used it, uh, used this in Osmocon BB project, and there was some discussions about uh, transcoding uh, in uh, uh, media gateway. So probably it uh, would help someone. I hope. Yes. So what is uh, JAPK? Many people here asking uh, me about this. What is these four letters? And it stands for JSM Audio Packet Knife. It was initially written by Sylvain. Okay, <laughs> 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 okay so I need to finish this. <laughs> and, uh, it is. Uh, it can. Uh, it supports uh, formats uh, encoding and decoding. For example, you can. Uh, uh, I don't know. Use uh, AMR or uh, JSM files in in different formats. It uh, supports uh, classical JSM codecs like full rate, half rate, or I AMR. Uh, some some work uh, was done by Harald uh, to make it support also. Uh, so you can uh, use your uh, audio subsystem on your uh, PC to play and capture sound. And uh, also some work uh, was done by Harald to support RTP streams, but it's unfinished, I think. And um, the use cases for of this tool is, uh, for example, transcoding uh, one audio format to another. It's uh, I think it's kind of uh, FFmpeg, but for JSM codecs. And you can, yeah, you know, <coughs> perform transcoding between, uh, for example, full, full rate audio into AMR. You can uh, listen for uh, real time uh, RTP streams and uh, do any transcoding <laughs> if you want. And, uh, what I would like to say uh, about the previous state of the project is that it was just a simple command line tool. And uh, there was no testing coverage. We only had some uh, samples, which uh, uh, we and uh, what we expect uh, after conversation, and that's all we had. And uh, we had no shared li libraries, and it was a single binary, and it was uh, not that useful for me personally. So here you can see the example how to, for example, co convert one file to into another. And uh, why not to turn this into a shared library? It's, uh, I think it's a good idea. And um, audio coding support, you, you can, uh, for example, use this library for audio coding in Osmocom BB in mobile application. You can, uh, we are currently doing some work of uh, implementing GRGSM blocks for GNU Radio to support uh, audio coding for GSM. And uh, it could be also used for Osmo Media Gateway to transcode streams. And probably someone else would like to use this. Oh. Uh, what was uh, what was done by by me is uh, I created uh, a new library called uh, Osmo JPK. Uh, I, we just just uh, some uh, some some work to put headers in common for Osmo Com. Uh, Projects location. There is a separate directory Osmocon JPK. And all symbols, all exported symbols uh, uh, have uh, Osmo JPK prefix now. It's a requirement. We have package config manifest so you can easily compile your programs together. Link against this library. And yeah, and we use, and now we use uh, Talak uh, subsystem for managing memory management and uh, we have some little bit better testing coverage, but not uh, not full yet. And uh, what was changed is that uh, GAPK was renamed to Osmo JPK because uh, many programs uh, have this uh, prefix, and uh, it is uh, linked against uh, LibOsmo JAPK. Uh, now we use uh, Osmocon login framework instead of uh, simple printf calls. And uh, some basics about uh, the architecture of uh, Osmo JPK. It is. Uh, it looks like uh, GNU Radio flow graphs. Uh, so you just uh, need to create a processing chain. It's called QI in terms of JPK, uh, and uh, they are um, not that complicated like you can create in GNU Radio. But uh, 
we have only source blocks, uh, processing blocks, and scene blocks, and you, that's it. There is no scheduler. You just need to iterate through the chain yourself. There is some IP for that, and you can allocate a few processing chains if you want to work with them somehow. And uh, yeah, here is some example how to create your own block because uh, for Osmo on BB, I have some little experience of creating my own block. And I will show some simple example. So all you need to uh, describe is uh, how much data, data are you going to receive from different blocks. Uh, in case of source, it's zero. Uh, how much uh, data are you going to pass uh, forward to another, to another block? And we have some internal state if you want to st store something. For example, file descriptors or so uh, sockets in case of RTP. There is output buffer where should we write data we just finish which we process. And there are two or even three, I don't remember exactly callbacks. So one is uh, prots, it's just like working new radio and uh, there is uh, some destructor. If you allocate some memory, this fun function should be used to free it. And some meta information for logging. And here is a simple example of uh, how to create your own block. This is um, file input. And uh, what this uh, block is intended for is to just read some data from file and nothing else. And the first, uh, first uh, thing you need to do is to just uh, allocate memory for processing item, item sorry, and uh, define the type of this block. It's a source block and uh, you can put some name you don't have input length because it's again it's source block and you have some uh, output data length and you just uh, specify two callbacks which uh, the first one is like work function of in GNU radio and the last is uh, this structure and here is some example of how this uh, pros function can look like so you just uh, read some data from file and put it into the output buffer and that's it. It's pretty easy and I recommend everyone to try to run, write your own block for JAPK. And uh, it's uh, really easy to use this uh, library because we have not that much headers. For processing quiz and blocks you have a separate uh, header file for formats. I'm sorry, here should be codex. Yeah, for codex, uh, you can use this uh, header, and all symbols have some prefix Osmo JPK. And uh, yeah, thanks. It's a simple processing query to handle your questions. Um, I have a question. Uh, like, why not using a G Streamer or FFmpeg or I mean? I'm not sure they actually support all codex of JSM. But I then again, if we're implementing them, why not implementing them there and just? It's a, just a simple project, and uh, sorry, FFmpeg is uh, too complex just to do some basic audio encoding, it's mm -hmm. my opinion. Okay. No, I mean, one of the fundamental differences, I think, to a lot of the codecs that you find out there is, uh, for example, that um, we have uh, not fixed size of, of um, um, codec uh, frames, so especially if you think of something like AMR, I'm not sure. I mean, at least that was. Uh, uh, I think that's that's uh, that's the difference. But for sure, something that can be looked at. But I mean, if it even can. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> I was going to say. I mean. Uh, yeah. Like CBR is not the only way to do it and like it's just many VBR um, formats out there and FMPEG perfectly works with that. I mean, the reason I didn't use GStreamer is because if you look at the original source code of GAP, um, like 95% of the source code is like completely codec specific and the actual stuff I would have needed to implement and the framework part is like 100 line and I wasn't gonna introduce the dependency into GStreamer and JLib and uh, all the initialization code that I need to set up a GStreamer flow graph just to literally take, you know, the 26 byte or I don't remember how much and call one function and, and uh, install the output. Uh, I mean, originally that tool was mostly because I was dealing with the um, 
you know the format that is generated by the uh, the Rackal test set and uh, the uh, DSP API of the thing, where most of the stuff is not even correct stuff. It's reordering the bits because they manage to put all the parameters in you know 50 different fashion, uh, basically every possible combination. Uh, somebody uh, used it, so yeah. <coughs> it just seemed overkill, basically. And I think another advantage of this, uh, exactly why not say FFM practice, it's much easier to embed this project, I think. Yeah, well, FFM pack is not that big either. Yeah, probably we yeah, have. You're kidding me, right? <laughs> For sure, you can compile it uh, wherever uh, in any way you want. You can only compile some codecs that you need exactly. And yeah, if if you have some time, yeah. <laughs> We have about five minutes, I think, and I, I'm going to try to sh show some real example of usage uh, of the JPK in Osmocon BB, for example. Yeah. Can I also ask, or maybe sure, we can get that together? Um, what was the status with ALSA and RTP streams? Like, is, would, it, would it be possible to capture RTP stream off the wire and play it through ALSA? Sure, this is exactly what I'm going to show you. You can easily, you can try some simple live demo, I think. Uh, so, APK, we have more or less complete help for that. And uh, for example, you can uh, capture capture frames from, from ALSA, I think. Uh, it's default. Just need to specify which device are you going to use for capturing. Here you need to specify, to specify the input format, and in this case, it's a raw frame format. It was somewhere, yeah, raw PCM. And then you need to uh, specify which codec are you going to use, in which format to be more correct. For example, if we would like to use, uh, I don't know, JSM full rate or AMR. To write this to some kind of output file in temporary directory, like uh, a is yeah, it's uh, just starting, and we can try to send something, uh, say something here, and it should capture. And now we can use the same tool to play uh, this captured stream. If I didn't break anything, it should work. We need the input file. We need input format, which we used. Used here. And uh, the format we are going to convert it to the raw PCM back. And uh, play to also sync also. Yeah, default playback device. Simple example of this. <laughs> yeah, I hear myself here, yeah. And uh, here we, we have some basic integration of audio we demonstrated at the Congress. Uh, we are only able to normally decode uh, downlink frames, but not uplink, because I it's my bet. Because uh, I initialized the JAPK library at the, at the beginning of execution of a mobile application. And I should do this uh, when uh, exactly when we start call and we finish call, but uh, it was like a hack. So I'm not sure is it. Yeah. somehow visible yeah I will show this so uh, what's the idea then to use it with Osmo Com BB or uh, like do you have something in mind or is it already working there or yeah I can even try to demo uh, to show this in uh, in action so while, here. while Vadim is preparing um, 
So in Osmo Combi B, originally uh, you could make voice calls, but the audio would actually be on the phone, right? No, um, no. Uh, we have MNCC in in Osmo Combi B. Exactly. That's what how Jolly did it. So the traditional way of using voice in Osmo Combi B is then that you have the uh, the voice on the MNCC interface, and you can attach LCR to it or something like that. And um. this is exactly why I use uh, <laughs> Osmo Need B because uh, we have LCR. They're working at last, but until we repair support. And yeah, also here you can see the fake TRX in action. So we just start uh, base station and we have our own virtual network. And uh, we need to switch to mobile. Start TRX clone, you start mobile application. Yum, you. For example, I don't know. Better to show this. Again, we don't uh, actually transmit anything. This is virtual environment. We put some virtual SIM card. This is Germany. And then we can uh, try to test. This is exactly what I demonstrated at the Congress. Five, if I'm correct. And this is how it works together with a smartphone BB. Nothing special. Uh, we have some problem with uplink. <laughs> For example, there is another number, 993. And uh, the problem is that we hear sounds from the past. <laughs> when we started mobile, it already started to record the frames and put them to buffer. And we read them to... Probably sound of my keyboard. And, and yeah, it's from the past. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> and yeah, that, uh, that's all. I, if we still have some time, we... Yeah, also source code, but I'm not sure we have. Yeah, if you have any questions, uh, as usually, feel free to ask. <laughs>